Silence is golden. Now, I know that silence, for some of you, that scares you, especially in a conversation. And if there's a moment of silence, you want to fill it because you don't want people to think that you forgot what you were supposed to say or that you're uncertain about what you're going to say. But the reality is, when it comes to public speaking or communicating with influence, Silence is your secret weapon. And it actually what it does when you are silent or where you use silence um, when you're speaking, it will help you to relieve anxiety. So say, for instance, you get on stage and you are just terrified. You have no desire to even open your mouth. If you just stop and take a deep breath and just use that pause, that moment of silence, it will relieve your anxiety. And one of the things that silence also does is help you to create an audience connection. And what I'm going to share with you today are some key strategies about how you can really leverage silence in your presentations. And you'll see how um, one of the strategies we will talk about will um, show you how you will create that type of audience connection. And the other thing that silence can do for your presentations is to make them more intriguing and memorable. Again, one of the strategies we'll talk about is, you know, using that silence or pauses um, in your storytelling, and that will help you. And so one of the things that I want you to understand too, though, is that it's not just about um, being awkwardly silent, right? So just stopping or pausing just for the sake of doing it because somebody told you, oh, you know, silence is golden. Kelly said silence is golden and we should use pauses. So for just some random reason um, in your speech or your presentation, you just stop talking. <laughs> You've probably heard people do that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is being intentional and strategic about when, where, and how you use that silence to really help you drive home your message. So enough fluff, enough, you know, talking around the subject. Let's get straight into it. Let's talk about these strategies. And I have quite a few of them for you. So we're going to go through them one by one, but these are strategies that you can employ to ensure that your presentations intrigue, that they transform and they shift your audience. When I work with um, speakers and leaders to help them develop their presentations, that's a framework that I use. It's called the ITS framework. And I'm always telling them that what you're doing when you're taking your clients on a journey, when you're taking your audience on a journey in terms of your presentation, is that you want to create intrigue. So you want to pull them into the conversation. You also want to transform them in some way. People aren't giving you their time to just sit and listen to you. They want to be transformed. And then if you really want to be an influential communicator, you have to learn how to shift people's perspectives. So that's the ITS framework that I use with my clients, create intrigue, transform your audience and shift transform your audience and shift their perspectives. And so when we're talking about these strategies around using silence in your um, presentations, in your speech, in your interviews, in your day-to-day one-on-one conversations, that's what we're, that is the underlying foundation for this. So first one, let's use silence before we make a key point. So what are we going to do? We're going to pause right before delivering a crucial piece of information so that we create anticipation and we focus the attention, right? So you're about to make a huge point. You just said all these things and you're about to make a huge point. Pause right before delivering a crucial piece of that information. Pause before you're going to deliver that main point because now people are like, wait, wait, what, wait, right? They're hanging on your every word. When you hear people talking about hanging on your every word, so if you put that pause in there, it's going to cause them to be like, oh, wait, what just happened? And it will create anticipation and focus attention. So the first strategy is to use silence before a key point. Second strategy is using it after a strong statement. So you have said something. You know how like you're at a, a, a presentation and somebody says something and you're like, oh, that's a whole word right there. Well, if you know that you had that whole word in your presentation, that's the place that you want to pause after that statement to allow the message to resonate, to sit in people's soul 
and give them time to absorb the impact. What I see often with speakers um, and people, you know, leaders who are trying to communicate a message, you're so interested in getting through the message. You're so interested in getting everything out that you forget that there are moments that you understand and, and you get the bigness and the fullness of it, but you don't give the audience time to absorb it. You've already sat with it, right? You developed it, but now the, they may be hearing it for the first time or they may have heard it before, but just right now they're in the moment to really absorb it. It really is going to make an impact. So after a strong statement is a second opportunity for you to use silence. A third strategy is to elicit participation. We often, um, as speakers, we love to speak, right? As leaders, we like to we we want to be at the front of the room and the center of attention, and we want people to listen to us. But one of the the key ways to get a message remembered and to really um, really shift your audience, really transform your audience, is for them to participate. So silence can be a way that you do that. So you can employ strategic pauses when asking for audience to input or a response, right? You, you have to give them time to think and engage more deeply. Have you ever been at a presentation and somebody asks you a question and then they just move on to the next thing and you're like, wait, 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 wait. I have an answer. <laughs> or give me time to think about it so that I can, that I can answer. So again, you have to be intentional and strategic. So you can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to ask a question and then I'm going to keep going because I want to elicit participation. But you don't give anybody time to really engage around what it is that you're asking, whether you're asking them a rhetorical question or you're asking them a question that you really want an answer to. Employ strategic pauses so that you give them time to think about it and to engage and then to give you a response. So that's the third strategy. Strategy number four is to use silence to build suspense. So silence can be used to build suspense and keep the audience engaged, right? For instance, if you pause before revealing a crucial part of your story or data point, that could build suspense, right? And so this kind of is similar to the one we, that we talked about before, like before a key point, but sometimes we're just talking about a key point, but you know, when you're telling the story and there's like, we come into the good part, right? And we want to build the suspense. So this is thinking about that, how you build suspense and use silence to help you do that, to keep the audience engaged and to keep them wanting and, and want, you know, wanting to hear more. Another strategy that you can use and um, another way to use silence is around processing time. So you want to give your, your audience time to process complex information, when we, especially if you're talking about a technical audience, so if you listen to the audio on addressing um, different types of audiences, one of the audiences that we talk about is um, presenting to a technical audience where you might be using a lot of data, you might be using a lot of jargon, a lot of big A words, as they say. Um, and so you can't just throw that down their throats. When when I was practicing law and trying cases, when I was doing, you know, anything that may have been like medical or something that was just really complex, we had to make sure that we gave our jury time to process the information. And so, you know, doing, you know, giving a brief silence, just a brief pause after you explain a technical detail or you present data that helps ensure comprehension so that you don't lose your audience as you move on to your next point. This is really important because we like to give all the information. We don't give them time to absorb it. We don't give them time to process it. We move on to the next thing because we're like, oh, I only have 60 minutes. I only have 30 minutes to give all this information. And I have 3,000 slides and I'm going to get through it. That's not going to help, right? That is going to lose your audience. So you've given them a point, a technical detail. They're stuck. They're stuck right there in that moment and you've moved on. Well, they've not moved on with you. So it doesn't matter that you got through your 3,000 slides. They didn't get through the 3,000 slides with you. So you have just totally lost your audience and your ability to do the ITS framework, which is to create intrigue, transform your audience, and shift perspectives. 
Here's another strategy for um, using silence, and that's to manage the flow of what's happening. So managing the flow of your presentation, it can help you to control the pace of your speech. If you're like me, sometimes I speak really fast, especially if I, again, if I want to get something out or if I'm excited about it, I will speak really quickly. Well, not everybody can hear at the speed of sound <laughs> Right. And so we have to make sure that we are slowing down. And so using silence, using pauses helps us to do that. And it prevents us from rushing through our content and ensures that you maintain a steady, deliberate rhythm. Right. So managing the flow of how you are delivering information to your audience is another way that you can use silence. You can use silence to own the stage. Silence demonstrates confidence and control. Because remember I said at the beginning, a lot of you don't like silence. And if there's silence, you are trying to fill that space. But being able to stand in silence, that is such a powerful move, right? Not having this uncontrollable urge to just fill the space with nonsense and with just anything so that you don't have to listen to it. But if you are able to use your silence in that way, it shows that you're comfortable with pauses and that you just don't need to fill every moment with words, that you understand that there's power in that quiet space, power for people to be able to reflect, power for people to be able to analyze, to comprehend, to really internalize the message. Another way um, to use silence I know I'm giving you a lot today, um, but these are really, um, if, if you really embody these, and you don't have to use all of them, right? <laughs> use use how what makes sense to you. Another way is to highlight transitions. So you can use silence to mark transitions between key points, right? So that allows the audience to mentally shift gears and follow your narrative more smoothly. So instead of the usual, okay, we just finished with point one, we're going to go on to point two, it may just finish with point one, take a pause, and then move on to point two. Again, your audience will shift gears with you, right? They'll be able to follow what you're doing. So this is just another way. And remember when I'm talking about silence and I'm talking about these pauses, I'm not saying stay silent for 50 (laughs) seconds, right? Or for three minutes. It's just the art of taking a breath. It's the art of giving space. What you're doing is creating space for the brain to be able to absorb and um, take in what you're saying. Another strategy is to enhance storytelling. When we're telling stories, depending on the story that we're telling, um, sometimes we just want to rush through it. We want to get to everything. But in storytelling, a well-timed pause can amplify emotions It can make moments of joy or sorrow or surprise just even more impactful. You know, when you've heard people tell a story and then they take a pause and you're like, wait, what's next? Or, you know, like they'd say, you know, they they pause and then they tell you the big reveal. And you're like, oh, wow. That's exactly what this can help you do. And what you'll see is, you know, as you listen to me tell you these, you'll see that they kind of overlap. But what the reason why I'm giving them to you this way is so that you know, as you're developing your talks, as you're developing your presentation or whatever it is that you're working on, that you can see, okay, well, what is it that I want to do? Because you may want to enhance storytelling, your storytelling. So you want to use silence, right? It's not necessarily maybe that you want to build suspense with building suspense and maybe, you know, ap- you pausing after a strong statement kind of go hand in hand with some of what we're saying about enhanced storytelling. But me giving it to you this way allows you to say, mm, okay, this is what I want to do. So how can I use silence? How can I use silence to own the stage? How can I use silence to highlight transitions? How can I use silence to manage the flow, right? So just look at, listen to, go back and listen, taking take notes around this and think about where you can really use silence. We're, on, we're down to our last two. And this one is to avoid fillers. 
I know that I have a tick in my speech where I say right. And if you go back and listen, you'd be like, yeah, she does say right a lot. And I I really don't worry about it. I know that um, people go to Toastmasters or things like that to learn how to remove all those things. Truthfully, I don't worry about it. But if you want to, um, see, I just said a filler. If you want to remove or avoid fillers, Instead of using fillers like, um, like I just did, or, uh, just embrace silence, right? And instead of saying, right, like I just did, (laughs) you can just embrace silence. And that allows you to project confidence and gives you a moment to collect your thoughts. The reason that we say these things is because, again, we're filling the space. And so if we get to the, the point where we can say, I'm just going to take a pause because I'm not sure what I want to say right then, or I'm moving into a different place. And what's going to happen is if I don't stay silent, then I am going to fill it with something than just just stay silent. But I know that people are really obsessed sometimes with the fillers. And if it's too, if you just constantly doing it, uh, it does become too much. However, I would not. Uh, obsess over that. But if you are obsessed over it, or if you want to make sure that you cut down on some of it, silence is a great way to do that. And then lastly, is to command attention. So this kind of goes back to owning the room, but some people might be like, I don't know about owning the room, but I would like to command some people's attention. So a silent pause can command attention and signal that something important is about to be said. So it will draw your audience in and heighten their focus. So as you can see from all of this, when you are using the power of silence, it's really about creating this connection with you and the audience. It's about bringing them in. It's about allowing them the space to breathe and to comprehend and to internalize. And so this is a dance with you and your audience. It really helps to solidify the relationship and to show that you're being respectful of their time, respectful of why they're there, respectful of them getting the information to be able to go on this journey with you and so that they can get the outcome, their desired outcome that they that they want from having come to hear you speak or from you know being in your meeting and wanting to then do something with the information that you have provided to them. So don't be afraid of silence. I know sometimes they say silence is deadly, but I'm here to tell you that when it comes to being an influential communicator, silence is golden. All right, y'all, that's it for now on this one. I hope this was uh, valuable to you. I cannot wait to hear how you are going to use a silence in your next presentation. And until next time, take care.